Hello friends, welcome to Crack Gate CSE and in this series of algorithm we have started the dynamic programming chapter. So in the previous video I discussed to you about the dynamic programming introduction and the some formal definitions of dynamic programming and the difference between the dynamic programming and the greedy approach. So if you have not checked that video, please go back and check that video first and then later on we will be discussing about the Fibonacci series right so before starting this particular video i would like to request you all if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon also so that you can get an update whenever i am uploading any new video now let's start with the first application of dynamic programming which is fibonacci series or we call it as a fibonacci sequence so this this is a predefined thing that for a value zero the fibonacci of zero is 0 and the Fibonacci of 1 is 1 but if I try to find out the Fibonacci of 2 then it will be the sum of previous two values of Fibonacci right so 0 plus 1 it will be 1 right similarly if I try to find out the Fibonacci value for 3 it will be the sum of the previous two values that is 1 plus 1 2 similarly for 4 it will be 1 plus 2 3 for 5 it will be 3 plus 2 5 for 6 it will be 8 and for 7 it will be 13 for 8 it will be 21 and so on so we just need to add the two previous values of the Fibonacci so what is the recurrence relation see the function Fibonacci of n is equals to n if n is 0 or 1 so if it is 0 then the value will be 0 only and if it is 1 then the value will be 1 and if there is a value which is greater than 1 for that we have to sum of the previous two values what is the meaning of previous two values for example if i want to find out the value of f3 then i have to add the values of f2 that is f3 minus 1 which is n minus 1 and f3 minus 2 which is f n minus 2 so this is how we can find out the recurrence relation and what is the general algorithm for the Fibonacci series? If I talk about the algorithm without dynamic programming, we can simply write the algorithm like this. So this is the function Fibonacci n. So if n is greater than 0, sorry, if n is equals to 0 or n is equals to 1, then it will be written 1, right? Else we can return this particular n minus 1 plus f n minus 2. So this is the general algorithm for the Fibonacci series. Now let's try to understand this by finding out the Fibonacci series, Fibonacci sequence of 6 that means F6. So I am trying to divide it, I am trying to represent in tree format using this particular recurrence relation. So F6 can be written as F6 minus 1 which is 5 and F6 minus 2 which is 4. Similarly F5 can be written as F5 minus 1 which is 4, F5 minus 2 which is 3. Similarly I draw on this particular background. So after I draw this particular diagram, what is the time complexity if I use without dynamic programming? So you can see that here I am having 6 different levels. So whatever the value of n we are having, that much level will be in the left hand side of the tree. So here we are having 6 levels, right? But on the right hand side here, you can see that we are having equivalent to 6 by 2 levels. So if this value is larger, if I am taking n here, then n by 2 will be the level on the right hand side because we are dealing with the upper one. So we are not talking about the small or negligible changes, right? So that's how we can find out the time complexity. For F6, it will be constant. But if you try to find out this F4 plus F4, how many functions call? It will be 2C. I explained you using the tree method to find out the time complexity so this is the same method i am using so this one is divided into two and this two are further divided into two so can i write it as two square c right similarly if you go to the next step it will be nothing but two to the power three c and so on so if there are n elements that means if there are n different labels can i write it as two to the power n into c Yes, I can write it. So, if there are, so what I am trying to explain you with this that if I have to find out the time complexity of Fn or the uh, Fibonacci of n, then there will be n level tree. So, for 
taking the upper bound i am considering that all these values are complete that means i am talking about the complete binary tree because i am taking the upper bound so if i want to find out the fibonacci of n that will give us the n level complete binary tree so if i want to find out the number of node in n level complete binary tree there is a formula that 2 is to the power n minus 1 right so if i want to find out for this particular uh, three node tree so let us understand that there are only these three nodes and we want to find out the number of nodes how we can find out we can just try to put the values of n as 2 because there are two levels to so 2 to the power 2 which is 4 minus 1 which is 3 so 3 nodes are available in this complete binary similarly you can find out for any number of levels right so if there are 2 to the power n minus 1 nodes that means there are, there are 2 to the power n function call what is what is a function call all these particular nodes are nothing but a function because f6 is calling f5 and f4 f5 is calling f4 and f3 similarly all of these nodes are behaving as a function so if there are 2 to the power n function call so can i say that each function call will be resolved in constant time so the time complexity is nothing but order of 2n so the time complexity without dynamic programming is nothing but order of 2 to the power n similarly if i want to find out the space complexity how i can find out the space complexity see we know that if you have to find out the space complexity it will be nothing but input plus extra what is the meaning of input input plus extra that means whatever the space is used in input and the space which is used to calculate that means the space that has been consumed in calculating that particular algorithms equations or everything that will become under extra so if i have to find out for the f6 that means or I can say fn then I have to give some input so it will be constant like either 2 byte or 3 byte so that will be constant but if you talk about this extra we will be needing n, uh, n space because there are n different functions and in each function we are performing it in a recurrence relation so stack space will be needed so stack space of size n will be needed so the tag so the space complexity will be constant plus n which is nothing but order of n so the time complexity without dynamic programming is 2 to the power n and the space complexity without dynamic programming is order of n now let's try to understand one important thing see i am having this particular tree and in this particular tree you can see one thing that here the functions call are repeating so in this particular recursive tree many functions call are repeating so you can see that this f4 is repeated here right this f3 is repeated here similarly this f3 is repeated here this f2 is repeated at multiple places so similarly you can see that there are so many functions call which are repeating so the repeating functions call the repeating function call are known as overlapping sub problem so the repeating function call are known as overlapping sub problem so now you might have wondered one thing that if i am getting the same functions again and again so what is the need to execute the same functions f4 or f3 three times we can do one thing instead of executing this f3 three times we can execute it once and we can save it in a table for the later reference so this is the idea behind the dynamic programming so in dynamic programming we will be executing only the distinct function calls and we will be storing those values in a particular table or a data structure for the later reference so now the question arises is that how many
that how many functions call are there in Fibonacci series. So if I have to find the Fibonacci series for the Fibonacci value of n then how many distinct functions are there. So by this example you can see that if I want to find out the value for f6 then how many distinct functions are there? f6 is 1, f5, f4, f3, f2, f1 and f0. That means 6 function calls are there, right? So 6 plus 1, generally 6 plus 1 functions call are there because 6 are these level and 1 is f0. So to find out f6, I have to compute f5 and for f5, I have to compute f4. Similarly, for f4, I have to compute f3. For f3, f2, for f2, f1 and for f1, f0. That means I need to execute 6 plus 1 function call or 6 plus 1 distinct function call. That means I can say that for n, I need to execute n minus 1 functions call which is nothing but approximately equals to n because we are dealing with the algorithms and here we do not consider the negligible things right so this is order of n so in this particular dynamic programming if i am executing only these distinct functions call so these are n particular functions call and for each execution i will taking some constant amount of time so for the dynamic programming the time complexity of the Fibonacci will be nothing but equals to n because storing these values into table will take some constant amount of time right so this is the time complexity order of n so you, you can see that the time complexity has been reduced so the time complexity without dynamic programming was equals to order of 2 to the power n right but the time complexity with the dynamic programming is reduced to order of n. So the time has been saved. Now we have to check for the space complexity. So if you need to deal about the space complexity, how we can see? See, space complexity is again nothing but input plus extra. So if I am considering the dynamic programming, then space complexity will be again equal to input plus extra so input will be just a integer so we'll be taking just two bits right plus in extra i need to take some stack values because i am using recursion right and apart from the stack value i need to store these functions value into some table so in extra one thing is extra one thing is additional so this stack will be taking order of n time and the table we need is also of n length because n distinct function call are there. So overall if you see that the time complexity is nothing but order of sorry the space complexity is nothing but order of n. So the space complexity with or without dynamic programming is same as order of 1 while the time complexity has been changed from order of 2 to the power n to order of n. Right? Now, see, whenever you are trying to execute in dynamic programming, whenever we are calling a function, so you can see that here I am calling f4. For example, I am calling f4. So first of all, I will check whether this f4 is available on the table or not. So if the value of f4 in the table is null, then only I will be executing this particular function else I will be skipping it. How? Now let's try to understand this with the help of an algorithm using the dynamic programming. So this is the algorithm using dynamic programming. So here the initial condition is same that means if n is equals to 0 or 1 then we will simply return n but else now if I have to find out for f6 we will be first checking it in a table that means if table of 6 minus 1 that is 5 which is nothing but this particular node if this node is null this n means null over here so you can also write it as null so this n is null and if this is null then we will be computing this table of n minus 1 and we will be storing 
the value of dp fibonacci n minus 1 i am calling this function recursively and storing the value of f5 in table number 5 or table 5 similarly now i have to store f4 so again i am checking whether table of 6 minus 1 that is table of 4 is null if the table of 4 is null then only i will be executing it so again i am storing the value of f4 in this table and once we are calling it recursively again and again in the last step we will be adding up these two values because what is the recurrence function see the recurrence function or the recurrence relation is the fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 so i am storing n minus 1 value and n minus 2 table to value and finally i am returning table of n so it will give you the fibonacci value now how you can check the time complexity using this particular code c here and here these two are responsible for executing the function and by these two if condition we are only executing those functions which are distinct so there are n distinct function call and if n distinct function call that means order of n because the value of storing and checking the condition will take some constant amount of time right and similarly i already told you this case that space will be order of n so this has been reduced from order of 2 to the power n to n while the time complexity is reduced but the space complexity is same so this is how the fibonacci sequence or the fibonacci series works with the dynamic programming approach i hope this you found this video useful and if you found this video useful like this video share it with your friends comment your feedback in the comment box and if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel for more such videos and press the bell icon for the latest notification of the videos right and in the next video we will be understanding about the second application of a dynamic programming which is nothing but longest common subsequence so thank you very much for watching keep supporting keep learning have a great day